hey, Phil from the future here. As a heads up, the rounds with this deck are extremely long. If you are looking to watch the interesting rounds, I recommend rounds four and five. Round four is versus Jeskai Stoneblade, and round five is versus an interesting five-color control deck list. Enjoy the show. You ever just, like, open Twitter, look at your mentions, and then just there's a random, I have given you your blood money for this one comment? Yeah. Yeah, me either. That, like, definitely doesn't happen. <laughs> Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video. Um, and we're we're fully embracing the jank today. Um, so Staff of the Storyteller is a card that I believe is very real in Legacy. I've played against this a couple of times on the channel already, and it's looked pretty impressive. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Whenever you make a creature token, you get a story counter on this, and you can remove a story counter to draw a card. So essentially, this is a 1-1 one, one that later you pay more mana for and you get to draw a card. But it can be repeatable. So here's the game plan. Joel Rail, Moon, uh, Moon Vully Recluse is a 1-2 human. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 cat creature token. So you see where this is going? So, we draw our second card. We make a token. We put a counter on this, which is going to let us draw a card later. So our next turn, we draw a card for turn. We activate the staff. We draw our second card. We put a counter. Or sorry, we get a cat. We put a counter on here. Okay, you see where this is going? It's cool places. So, like, are we a little bit in meme territory? Yes. Is this also a sick value engine? Yes. Uh, I'm a little worried that this is kind of a small body and a caracasable threat, but, like, there's some cool things going on here. And uh, technically, this also has some six mana flavor text as well, if we actually get to the point where we can activate that. The rest of the deck list here is a Bant control shell with things like Uro, Teferi, and a pile of removal that we're used to working with. We have a minor misstep in this deck as well, which is a very, very reasonable legacy card that people are kind of still feeling out and seeing how they like it, but the power level is absolutely correct for legacy. And then we do other, also have one other way to make tokens. We can make some samurais with the Wandering Emperor. And I'm always down for playing this, like, anime vibe card. The sideboard is something that I threw together in five minutes. Don't uh, take this as gospel if you end up wanting to play around with this deck list. I just kind of did a search for Bant Control deck lists and put in a lot of things that were kind of stock to these deck lists. I maybe only need two Carpet of Flowers and three Seeds of Innocence might be overkill. I thought about playing Collector Roof or Serenity. Um, a lot of the artifact hate that you're going to run into this deck is going to blow up your own staff of the Storyteller, so that's just something to keep in mind here. So whether you decide to run like Collector Roof, Serenity, Seeds of Innocence, Force of Vigor, you know, whatever, just kind of keep in mind that there's trade-offs associated with these when you are playing your own artifacts. One thing that I do want to mention here, as these games go very long, this is not a legendary artifact, so you can get some sick value trains by kind of playing multiple of these together. So, how meme is this? Like, are, is this a reasonable direction to take a Bant control list, or is this just the meme dream? Let's jump into some matches and find out. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It is the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's make some tokens. Oh, uh, and thank you to Sean D for donating to make this league happen. Because I didn't formally say that when I pulled up that tweet. I don't really have anything that I'm specifically looking for right now. Um, I think I'm just going to play a Misty and pass rather than just kind of ponder blindly before I know what the matchup is. Ample Garden, so we're probably playing against a Field of the Dead deck, confirmed. I'm not going to get too many opportunities to force things. Go ahead and force that. Bring the Brainstorm, I think I'm happy enough with my land drops in the short term. There is a Teferi. 
let's go ahead and fetch. I think I'm already exposed to wasteland. I think I'm going to go ahead and just drop this and start my value stuff. Sort of in the medium to long term, I would like something that insulates me against a merit lodge. Yep. This is fine. Go to combat. Do some pokies. On it goes to 17. Go ahead and ponder. Do I accept all three of these? I do want this and this. Comes at the cost of also taking a prismatic ending. Okay. No shuffle. We'll drop Caracas and then I can draw a card with this. I don't know. Maybe once I have the Caracas, I don't have to worry about Source of Plowshares as much, but like, that is very real. No, oh, you're not targeting the Caracas. Sure. I'll end of turn. Draw my card. Make my land drop. Continue, pokies. I don't want to see life from the loam wasteland. Uh, I really wanted to play this, bounce this, do some value stuff, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and stop that. Yuck. I've sort of bottomed out here in the short term. I'm not likely to die quickly. Ah, fuck. But I am going to kind of lose out on everything and leave my opponent on a 15 turn clock here. Um, at this point, it's probably uh, worth just conceding. Like, I just, I just don't think I can beat Wasteland Lock. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, they've just got two of them. Yeah. I just don't think I'm beating this. Like, I'll wait until my opponent plays a threat. Like, I still technically have a clock in play, right? Like, I'm not technically, like, losing life points yet or anything. All right, sure. That's at least one that can sit around for a little while. Um, with the way that this mana base was built, I couldn't justify playing something like Back to Basics in this deck, which would have been a pretty big deal. And, okay. I mean, I've got that covered in a couple of different directions, really. Slowly. Very slowly, but surely. So this is going to be presumably an Ancient Tomb. Or a Yavimaya that accomplishes the same thing. Uh, and it's probably better. Um, that actually gives me access to more colors of mana. Yep. Don't look, YouTube. Don't look at their life total. <laughs> We're on a 32 turn clock. NBD. So at some point, they can just, like, dredge life from the loam, get that stuff back, and it's a huge problem. <laughs> Oh, please let me prismatic ending this away before you put anything else in. I need that. Okay, that's a field. You mana bonding lands, please don't. Oh shit, they didn't. Lucky. I just have to ending that away this turn. They're, like, I really want this card in play so that I can attempt to assemble my, like, value engine. But it's just not realistic for me to do so. There's some, uh, some goodies in Graveyard. All right, Loam Returns, Stage Depths, Wasteland. Okay. The next turn, my opponent can just create a new Merit Lodge. I will create blockers. So, I create a 1-1. One, one. Now this does trigger both of these. And uh, we'll go ahead and get on in there. Am I going to grind through this? No. Am I going to try? Still here, aren't I? <laughs> All right, so Merit Lodge is coming. I'd like to draw another land. Oh, that's real good too. Beatdowns will continue until morale improves. On it goes to 28. Soon to be 48. Yep. And then I'll just swords to plowshares the Merit Lodge that comes about as a result. I need white to activate this. All right, no dredge this turn. Another life from the loam. Stage depths wasteland again. 
So I guess I just put this into play for this turn. Continue on crashing in and then try to ride this value train uh, to something that resembles a victory. We're surviving much longer than I expected, given how badly the beginning of this game went with just like force of wills being kind of necessary on my opponent's cards. All right, draw first card for turn. You can draw second card for turn with Uro or with Staff of the Storyteller. I do it with Uro. I only have one of each basic, I think. Forest Island Plains. Yeah, I only have one of each basic. I could do it with this without paying life. Let's try this. So this gives me three life and a card. Okay, it's another staff. That's great. I will get a cat, which triggers both of those. Sacrifice that. I hold back my spirit tokens as Merit Lodge blockers. And then hopefully just kill a Merit Lodge somehow next turn. Like a crop rotation for a Sejiri step is... What kills me? Ooh, no end of turn Merit Lodge. Nice. <laughs> Who will win? One Field of the Dead or one Goal Rail? I think it's Field of the Dead, folks. So if you haven't seen... <laughs> you haven't seen this happen before, it fucking sucks. So Field of the Dead sees every single one of those lands entering, uh, creating a token army. Yeah? Maybe? Maybe? That's a ponder. Here's these things. Now this only does trigger once a turn. I don't I don't really know how I'm winning. I guess an epic army fight of some kind. Let us create minions. Make a spirit, trigger the stabs. Um I guess I should have removed a counter from this one instead of the other one. Like, my attacks are bad due to Maze. My opponent can get three more zombies per turn cycle with life from a loam. Again, I, I really should just concede, but... That's a second field of the dead. So this just gets, like, a maze, a field. Maybe another stage to copy field of the dead. Yep, yep, yep. Field, wooded foothills, that's main stage. Yeah, that's fine. My opponent's... Thing. Okay. Yeah, so they are copying the other Field of the Dead. And at end step, my opponent is going to make an entire army of zombies. I'm, I'm comfortable conceding here. Like, I put up a good fight, but it's turn 14. My opponent is about to have three separate Field of the Deads. Like, that's, that's fine. I would like Force of Negation. I'll probably take at least Endurance to clear out Graveyards. Like, I can deal with a Merit Lodge and then, like, extract one of the lands or something. Minor Misstep has a very narrow window to be good. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Wandering Emperor seems slow. This is five total cards. Probably get rid of Dress Down. I don't know that I need to go up on Counter Magic so much as I just need the one that exiles. This seems acceptable, but I don't like the side of the matchup that I'm on. I probably don't get to throw this back. It becomes awkward if I just have to force of will something on turn one. It's like Brainstorm is my only blue card here. I think I'm going to go ahead and just Brainstorm in response to that. Because if I find a Prismatic Ending, I'm fine with giving my opponent a single... Uh... Single land drop is the tail end of that sentence. I'm going to assume that I can find another one of these later when I need it, and then I'm going to put back one land. I'll redraw that land, and I will just force this. Maybe I'm supposed to not keep both of these at the same time. Land feels more important than anything else here. Or sorry, this, this fetch land. Oh, fuck. Why is there a ghost quarter? All right. Ghost Quarter basically undoes everything that I have been going for in this early portion of the game in trying to get basic lands. Don't need silence. All right. I guess this means that I'm now going for non-basics. 
and I get things that help me cast Uro. This needs to be green. Probably green blue. Alright. A to fairy. I don't want to just start clocking my opponent with endurance, but yeah, maybe I'll just start clocking my opponent with endurance. Very awkward having like endurance and surgical at the same time here. Uh that was always something that could happen. I'll send that wasteland back into their deck so that they can't recur it. We'll still have the mana necessary to cast a Teferi next turn. Uh-huh. I guess I'm just surgicaling that now. Then I'll get information about my <laughs> choke. Alright, um... Two chokes. Two stony silence. Multiple ghost quarters. Wow. Yeah, this is not happening. So I play this. I play Teferi. I plus Teferi. I bash in for three, and I try to go and play this in a way where I don't just immediately lose the choke. Alright, yep. And yep. And you do that choke thing, yeah, that's super cool. That exploration was such a good draw. If I bounce the choke, my opponent just gets to redeploy it. That exploration was so incredibly good. Yeah. Alright, my opponent goes to 14. I am just still going to do this, I think, force them to use the mana on it. And, like, draw myself towards more lands or whatever. Uh, but this situation is pretty dire. I need to dodge Thespian Stage and Field of the Dead. That's kind of where I'm at. Yep. Alright, there is a land. Lost the Teferi. Terrence has got to go all the way here. Bond's at 11. Every, every mulch effect is just horrifyingly scary right now. One, two, three, four, five different names for Field of the Dead purposes. Alright. Fog occurs. And we're chilling again. I guess I attack first. Yeah. Brings my opponent to seven. I don't think I want to just cash in to fairy for a card. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and plus. Opponent should be removing ice counters manually here, which they do do. It's very rare that this actually matters, but it's so free to do it. Uh, Maze of Ith sucks for me, because that stops endurance from mattering. I'm gonna go ahead and bounce the choke out of play to draw a card. Did not succeed in getting another land drop to play this. Send in endurance. Life is bad. I don't want to get to the point where I have to source the plowshares a merit lodge token. That's just so much time. Yeah, choke here basically just costs my opponent an ice counter. I only get one this turn instead of two. Uh-huh. Hey, flooded strand. All right. Do this. Go to combat. Hit up my opponent for some damage. Or at least try to. Second main phase. You can go ahead and fetch. A forest. Fetch. Get a plains. Play the staff. Technically puts another creature into play. It doesn't matter a whole lot. But this gives me an extra blocker and a blocker of a different color for if Merit Lodge ends up coming out. It's just ice counter time. I don't know if my opponent will think of ghost quartering these lands, but it's real good for them if they do. Alright, sure. Figured it out. I have no more of these. Yep. I still had a Savannah in deck. I could have fetched for one of those. I could have been left with a singular mana source. Small error on my part. One damage. Yep, yep, yep. Opponent's at six. Hard, hard mode Merit Lodge might actually happen. That's two activations, bringing it down to three. All right, that is a Caracas. I believe that's three, six, that is nine possible mana now. Have to pass the turn with blockers available and then try to do something with uh, Teferi Bounce next turn. 
I am leaving back all my blockers just in case something goes wrong. Okay, my opponent opted for two end of turn Dark Depths activations. I was expecting all three, but they're not going for their 2020 yet. They're just leaving it as a threat. There's a Thespian stage as well. I think you're supposed to not make at least one of those land drops. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just kind of in awkward staring mode with my opponent. They can't really attack anymore. I think awkward staring mode just results in them winning this game. I think you need to deck thin that hard. Again, I don't think it matters. Like, I think my opponent's got this one locked up. Uh, I have no counterspell for the Field of the Dead that's coming here. Tabernacle works too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and concede to that. That is, uh, that is that is going to be enough to beat me. GG's. I am playing against a Yorian deck of some kind. Very possibly death and taxes. Um, I don't love my mana in this hand. I think I still keep this and just kind of hope the top of the deck gives me some cantrips or other card advantage. I'm not going to be as good against Wasteland as I would like to be here. I'm probably forced to get Tundra with this. But I can push that decision off for a turn cycle in all likelihood. Ace is not the sort of draw that I am looking for here. Honestly, probably a card that I pitched to Force of Will. Ugh. I'm thinking about whether or not I just want to remove this with like Prismatic Ending or Swords of Plowshares. It's super awkward because I have Wasteland, which doesn't make colored mana for Prismatic Ending. I think I'm going to Swords Thalia. It's like so awkward because like Wasteland plus Singular Land here. Because of Caracas, I should probably make this call now. And I just don't love this. But here we are. My opponent actually having the Wasteland in the early game is rough here, so now if I draw a cantrip, this isn't actually real. Um, yeah, that can happen all sorts that. Alright, my opponent has gotten Trailblazer's Torch, uh, which is the initiative card. Sorry, I should zoom in on that for a bit longer. My opponent did not Wasteland me. I really want to use, like play this and use my mana efficiently here, but I just can't. I just think I have to remove that immediately. Something like a Cauldra coming into play would just be disastrous. And that's happening. A new Stoneforge Mystic. That's fine. Uh, we'll play this thing. At some point I might end up waste. Yikes. At some point I might end up wastelanding my opponent's wasteland. Uh, yep. They did it for me. Now they're just going to try to keep me ported down. Um, I can't guarantee to answer this one. This probably becomes a force of will. I'm not going to think too much about which one of these I pitch here. Uh, because of Trailblazer's Torch, I keep my spirit. Don't trade here. Draw a card. Not a land. I'll take my one damage. I have... I will not take my one damage. I have Force of Wills for days, but, like, that's not where I want to be here. My opponent is just going to rush out and port me down forever. Life is bad. Yep. I'll take one in combat, and this process is just going to repeat for a while until my opponent has four lands, and they can start doing a card plus porting me. All right. Discard an Uro to have one in graveyard for later. Yep, that's fine. All sorts of plowshares that in my upkeep. Pick one. There's the port. Sword's mom. Cool. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm just going to honestly, I'm I'm just going to concede this one here. This th this game is so over, uh, and I think it's just going to be miserable content if I continue playing this one. Uh, unfortunately, my game doesn't really get better against this deck. Like, I can play a couple more Endurances to have creatures, but I don't have more removal or anything. Like, in theory, I very much want to win game one versus this deck. And then I can pick up one of the two post-sideboard games. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Minor Misstep for an Endurance. I think that's all I'm doing. No. Uh, this hand also sucks. Like, this hand just does nothing. It plays this card. 
I, uh, not happy with this. I'm going to keep this under the rationale that I don't just lose to a Wasteland or Thalia immediately. But I am very unhappy with this hand. Yep. I think I am leaning into Wasteland rather than playing around it here. Probably grabbing Tundra. Uh, let's see if we can maybe go wide of my opponent. Like I have Burrow as a way to make a cat next turn. Um, this is pretty embarrassing versus Caracas, though. I have a, my opponent just had the eureka moment of like, what on earth are you doing? It's this. This is what I'm doing. Um, that, in theory, is fine. <sighs> so my plan is Bo Seiju that. Let's get, let's get Saucy try to sneak a point of damage in here. Sneak successful. I am going to Wasteland my opponent. I'm not sure if that is correct. But delaying the start of value-oriented high CMC creatures seems reasonable. Uh, and I'm just going to take this hit here. Go to 16. And do this at end of turn. Like so. Does give my opponent another basic land. And that's something that I wanted to avoid in the short term. So let's go Misty. Grab another Trop. Go ahead and play an Uro and start trying to do this cat nonsense. Solitude says no. Uh-huh. All right. Get another card here. Of course I will. Not the best here. I don't really want to cast that Force of Will. Um, one, two, three, four. Well, this will be the fifth one. That's Yori into hand. I'm about to lose blue mana. No cheeky mom attack. Uh, I need to brainstorm to fix this current situation. I do not. I do not succeed. Both wandering emperors can go back for now. Um, yeah, but I have nothing going on in my top four cards. Um, I don't want to be a pessimist here, but on the uh, good deck to meme meter, we're, I think, way over here. Like, this deck is just absolutely tripping all over itself. Like, it doesn't have enough basics to get into the late game playing only basics, and its mana requirements are pretty intensive. Cool. Good news is my opponent shuffled a Wandering Emperor off the top of my deck. Bad news is I don't have a row anymore, which was kind of my way out of this. Uh, sure. I just can untap a land for my opponent, which probably doesn't matter too much, but... Yep, that's not a castable card. I think it's very likely that I'm just going to be full-on dead to that wasteland. Uh, I will say no to that, I guess. I don't know, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe that's just too slow to matter. And I keep the Teferi so that I can start making cats if I draw a mana source. All right. Um, I think I'm going to give this two more draw steps, and if I don't draw a white mana source, I'm just going to throw in the towel. Like, I'm nowhere near six to activate this. I need white, white for this. I don't even have the first white. I probably don't win without this creature. I mean, I don't think I win even with it. Hey. That's a thing. So do that. Play a Teferi. I'm just going to immediately... Bounce the vial for some value. All right, that does give me another land. So you're telling me there's a chance. Goodbye, Teferi. You did fine. All right, um, Flicker Wisp now gets to do cool Flicker Wisp shit. So you can Wisp the Wisp to untap the Wisp and then Wisp my token. Or not. Life from the Loam. I think this is just a Flash Wandering Emperor. And try to set up like Wandering Emperor plus Swords of Plowshares doing something relevant. My opponent does still just have four cards though. This is six at me. I will go ahead and attempt to do this immediately. And attempt to kill a Flicker Wisp. My opponent will protect. I will take six. 
I'd like to draw another removal spell, because currently I'm locked into removing a Flicker Wisp. And I don't want to do that. Hey. I'm always plussing here. Do I kill both Flicker Wisps? Doesn't have reach. I don't think so. I'm going to win this game. In the long term, I do think I need to answer Mother of Runes. Tundra, Oseju, probably Wasteland here. Bring all those back. Drop a Tundra. Get in for my two and pass the turn. Now, this card can have real text in the not-too-distant future, but we are very much not here yet. And I don't Swords to Plowshares so that if my opponent splits attacks between me and Wandering Emperor, I can make actual decisions. All right, both are going at Wandering Emperor, so I don't need two Swords to Plowshares now. Goodbye. More mana efficiency here. In case I draw something big, I will go ahead and remove one of these. I will not be dredging life from the loam. Okay. Go ahead and just keep hitting land drops here, I think. Hit my opponent. Pass turn. I'm not interested in giving my opponent land drops. Like, they're going to have two vials on the same number anyway. So instead, I'll just kind of hold up some mana here. And I'm holding up Caracas bouncing this creature as well. I, I need a cantrip so badly. Hey, it's a cantrip. I can hopefully do a thing. Rest down and endurance. I feel like I need better than this stuff. I will be punished by drawing a land. Nope. Oh, it's a staff. Okay. That's very good. Let's go two mana. Play the staff. Make a bird. I'll save the staff activation for a little bit later. I think I'm just going to play that as a land rather than attacking the Aether Vials. And I am going to try to get in my damage when I can. Vials will go up to three. And hopefully I can just go wide of what my opponent is doing. They have six cards in hand, so like things will get gross quickly. Like We'll just see how bad it is here. All right, Skyclave targets that, so I will go ahead and draw my card here. Do not want life from the loam. There's a Swords to Plowshares. Uh, Jitte is scary, but not currently a problem. Uh-huh. I think I'm just going to do this here. Get another creature and continue to try to keep the pedal to the metal. I can dredge life from the loam, wasteland my own Boseju to get rid of Jitte. I think I'm better off just drawing a card, though. Confirmed. Battle? I don't have very many cards in hand. Send them. Alright, opponent goes to 12. Green. And white. Take out a Jitte. Uh, theoretical two-turn clock. Again, though, my opponent has a whole bunch of cards in hand, so... Not necessarily expecting all that to go well. Uh-huh. Now I might need to wasteland my own Boseju to take that out. Dredge, life from the loam. Float mana. Wasteland, target Boseju. Life from the loam, wasteland, Boseju. Some fetch land. Pay mana. Get all that stuff back. Yep, I have a legendary creature. Alright, do that. Go to combat. I think continue to just press in for damage. Like, I've just got to end this game before my opponent can do cool shit. Um, do I play lands? So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have enough to activate this. So I can have three, turn all these into base threes next turn. Yeah, I think I don't play a land. There's a vial at five. Things are kind of scary. There's a mom. Nope, I'll just draw. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go for it. Send them on in there. That is a solitude. I'll just let that happen. I go to seven for that. 
think I just let these all... Ch I think I just let that happen. I think I just let that happen. Okay. Now my opponent puts in their Yorian. Links those creatures. And only takes two. So there's theoretical lethal damage coming my way. I think I start here. Green, blue, white. Play this. Bounce the vial on five. So that my opponent can't immediately get necessary stuff back. Make a cat. Solitude is going to attempt to take out this creature. I think I attack this. Call it a turn. Bomb's a problem. So I'm at exactly seven, so I have to let this die. Well, get exiled more accurately. Then I can blink Yorian. Ugh. What you got? I guess there's also my Teferi as a wild card here. Oh, no attack. I guess I am, like, one point of damage away from killing my opponent, huh? All right. Bounce Yorian. Um, no... No dredge on life from the loam. Like, Poseidon on Vile is cute, but my opponent... Be better than that. Uh, I needed better than that draw here. I'll plus here. I'll make a land drop and pass the turn, but I'm... Falling behind. My opponent now has a Vile on five. Yorian Solitude is a thing that can happen. Alright, there is the Yorian. Blinking Solitude. I will start losing tokens to these things. Don't have like a Supreme Verdict type card to just immediately get me out of this situation. Do a plus with Teferi. Play a land drop and pass, but... I think I'm just on the wrong side of things here. Like, I can take a turn off to destroy the Aether Vial. A large amount of damage happens in order to make that a thing. <clears throat> um, I'm going to take this hit in hopes of... Oh, it's my Yorian, though. Or, sorry, my Teferi. Uh, maybe I can't take that. That card is pretty important. Yeah, like, my Teferi card draw is more important than one of these random tokens, I think, by quite a bit. Bye, cat. Yep. Again, I don't really think I can take the time off. Let's try to find something. They're decent cards. I think I'll take the Brainstorm. Not want to dredge. I'll go ahead and Brainstorm. No. 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 I will put back a land and a Brainstorm. Go ahead and fetch and clear. Sorry, I had a fetch land in play already. I shouldn't have done that like that. So let's get this vial out of here for now. Or, I don't know that I did that right. Sorry, I'm trying to move too quickly here. All right, make a critter. I think I'm pretty likely to just time out. No. Ponder is fine. Uh, yes. Bam. 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 No shuffle. Fetch a new land out. Uh, that's one of my last fetchables. Two mana for a new one of these. I need to always yield to this stuff. And call it a turn. Yep. I think I just take a hit for four here. And then bounce Yorian at end of turn instead. Just kind of gives me... I can even wait till my own turn. Flicker Wisp resolves. Taking out a token. End of turn, let's get Yorian out of here. I've reached this point where I can do some cool nonsense. And I will attempt to do so. So let's go ahead and draw my second card. Alright, Force of Will is cool. I can stop this Yorian stuff forever. I'll make a land drop. One, two, three, four, five, and one to protect. Yeah, I'll just call it a turn here. Yeah, I might actually be able to win this game. Um, but this is just so, so painfully slow. And I think this is only a game two, right? Um, Skyclave is fine. Yeah, I just bounce that. 
another swords. Except I could have drawn a card. I could have drawn a card to see if I drew exactly a blue card to... No, I, I don't want to force of will that. That is a brainstorm. I'll wait till my turn. It doesn't seem like mana is the bottleneck here. That's brainstorm. No, no, no. A back ending. And maybe ponder. Do I have a fetchable with this? I had, I thought, a land in deck. Oh, I might deck myself. That was not on my radar. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've drawn this many cards and I'm still having so much trouble killing my opponent. That is probably a testament to the power level of this deck. Like, it is turn 21. Oh, uh, I have, is this an exile? It is an exile, but my opponent, yeah, all right. I'll force a will that. End of turn, draw a card. End of turn, cast Endurance. Endurance target me so I don't end up decking. I'll just start by drawing this card before I brainstorm. Oh, dress down's cool. Go ahead and cast that. Uh huh. All right, dress down enters. I draw a card. Where's the flash? There's that creature. Um, fuck, I was supposed to use Wandering Emperor on that one. I'm trying to play quickly and fucked up. Uh, I guess that's fine. Put back one, I guess, two, a prismatic ending on a creature, pass this, find a new threat, yep, that's fine, no shuffle, pass turn, I could have been looking for lethal this turn, I just have no time to think, like dress down, exile, exile, like exile remove or something, yeah, that's fine, so this happens, Yorian out of play. All right, I lose Endurance. Opponent chooses no target for Skyclave Apparition. Play Jace. Bounce a Solitude back to your hand. Play Wandering Emperor. Plus, give a creature first strike. I'm going to play this free combat just so I can F6. Opponent's got a Caracas. This creature shouldn't matter. Send those creatures. When it takes two, I get nothing for the Skyclave. Okay, my opponent missed Caracas, which is great. All right, there is a Solitude. That should remove that Spirit token. Yep. There's a Lauren, which can destroy a Staff. Uh, so I have a line here where I minus... Bounce this creature, plus this here, bounce this here, attack in. My opponent is forced to solitude. Oh, they did not solitude. So, like, I, I win this game, but I lose the match to timeout. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and concede here. Um, GG. All right. I will keep this hand. It's very underwhelming. Like, I don't have access to white mana, but I have a couple of cheap pieces of interaction. Um, opponents uh, mulliganing to five. Don't exactly expect them to be playing a real deck list. Like, Pleasant Kenobi very much exists in the meme deck territory. We will see if I am mistaken. I am mistaken. That is going to get a no, sir, from me, assuming that this is reanimator. I'll hold up minor misstep uh, rather than pondering on my turn. Don't want to be drawing more prismatic endings here. How's my sideboard options versus this deck? Pretty decent. All right, um, end of turn in Tomb is a thing that can happen. Uh, love this. My mana's bad here. I don't have blue blue, which I very much would like to have. Sure. It's all fine. That was just purely for thinning. My opponent can now flashback Faithless Looting, which I have covered with minor misstep. Like so. And then things are very awkward for me if I don't draw a blue card here. Yeah, I think I just have to pass the turn with Force of Will. 
available. Double prismatic ending here super sucks for me. But I just like cannot give my opponent an opportunity to resolve something that gets a creature into the graveyard and turns on the rest of their hand. Um, that is a grief. That is occurring. That can take my force of will. Yep. And my opponent. All right. Blue is for sideboard show and tell. Um, I want to find white mana so that I can answer a grief. That's white white mana. I don't have a white white, which probably means that I just bury that. I have a Teferi on top of my library that I may draw. I'm kind of doing okay in terms of creature answers, and I think I would rather just have looks at an actual threat or brainstorm rather than a Teferi that is not actually accomplishing anything as of right now. Wondering Emperor came back, uh, which I do not like because I can't cast it. So I think this is just going to be one of those times where like, I lose to the fail rate of my own deck here. Alright, I at least have a land drop. So I can start doing Wandering Emperor nonsense. If my opponent has a reanimation spell, I think it should have just gone at grief and started doing things that pressure my life total and take my resources. But I'll take it. Wandering Emperor... Immediately minus for a creature. Uh, that is a hard castable force of will. I think I want to plus. Go ahead and take the immediate damage here. Drops my opponent to 13. That is an entomb. And I will say no to that. Alright, my opponent has conceded. Um, this game is many turns away from over. Like, I have three cards in hand, but... They're not good. I like these. And these. There's a total of eight cards. Life from the Loam seems unnecessary here. Prismatic Ending is usually very bad. It can do some things with Animate Dead sometime, but I don't think I want to be there. And then I probably get rid of some number of, like, Staff of the Storyteller and uh, Joel Rail. Joel Rail. Three of these. I don't know, I'm so, like, I probably can't cut too heavy either one of them. I don't know, this one cantrips automatically. I think I like that. We won game one, which is really huge here. Um, I will ship this hand, I have no colored mana sources. Uh, and it's quite bad. I don't have blue mana to cantrip. I do have Source of Plowshares, I have Force of Will, I have a couple of removal spells technically, I have a way to draw some cards, my opponent's just going to 5. I could keep this. I don't think I'm going to. This is a much better 5 card hand. Probably keep this pitching these two. Pitch Swords, and I think I'll go with Uro. See what my opponent has. Oh, I will say no to that. I'm going to pitch Brainstorm here and keep Fluster. My whole strategy here is trying to deny my opponent getting creatures into their graveyard. And then that effectively bricks the reanimation spells. See what they can do. Nothing. Nothing is good for me. We both mulliganed. Pretty deeply here. I'm just gonna play Boseju and pass. I don't want to risk Brainstorm and then, like, end of turn in Tomb being a problem that I'm not prepared for. Yep. Hopefully we'll fluster that. And hopefully that just leaves my opponent in a bad enough spot that they're just kind of stuck. Alright, um, I think that's a very early concession. Like, I have nothing in hand. Like, I, I Brainstorm... And I, I brainstorm lock myself immediately. Um, we'll take it. 
A quick shout out to Caleb J, Burrito Champion, Will S, and Alex M for supporting my content via Patreon. Thank you. It means a lot. Uh, for everyone else out there, if you haven't seen it already, there is a free to read article on my Patreon that goes over some of my recent life updates. Even if you're not a Patreon supporter, you can read that and read all about my new house and content creation changes. All right, back to the show. Um, so I'm not throwing this back. I have to use my cantrips to hit land drops, though. I'm not the biggest fan of. Okay, this hopefully means that this is going to be a slower matchup, and I will actually just have time to do stuff. So let's fetch. I am just going to take a basic here. I don't want this to be another one of those, like, situations where I just miss critical cards because I get wastelanded. We did see a Tundra Wasteland deck earlier today. For sure, sure. That's a basic. Stoneforge is fine. I will Swords to Plowshares that. Alright, it is getting Cauldra. Don't want the minor misstep that's under here. It's awkward. That means that I'm fetching now and getting a non-basic, which I don't want to do. But it is where I'm at. Okay, cool. Next turn, I can play Dole Rail. I've probably said that card a different way every time. Foreign names are tough, folks. Ah, uh, no, no. Uh, let's find Force of Will. Those are not Force of Will. Okay, um, Narset resolves. We're presumably playing against, like, Legit Jeskai Stoneblade. Uh, has Prismatic Ending now, which will take care of whatever I play to pressure Narset. That's not the best for me. Let's try to play something that messes with my opponent's counter magic. I'll just kind of plus this. And hopefully pave the way for something else to be good. Oh. No. Okay. If you're not familiar with this one, if you're the monarch, you get a 4-4 four, four spirit. And I can bounce that, and my opponent can just, like, replay it. My cantrips don't work, which means this doesn't work. This isn't enough pressure. Ugh. Alright, bounce that. Don't get to draw a card. Play this. Get a 1-1. One, one. Call it a turn. Narset's thing says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn, so I can use the staff to draw a card on my opponent's turn, but I am I'm on the wrong side of things in terms of tempo. Oh. Sure. Gonna Hallbreacher me? No Hallbreacher. Sure. Okay. Now my opponent is still the Monarch, so they are going to get to just draw extra cards. My stuff is resolving, which is kind of nice. Always plus to fairy. I think I'm just jamming another one of these. It gives me a 1 1 spirit that can try to poke Narset. I wonder if it's three syllables Joel Rael rather than a diphthong. A diphthong is a technical term for two vowels that go together, pronounced as a single syllable. In Latin, AE is a diphthong that is pronounced like I. It's Kind of how I was trying to pronounce that, but it's like almost certainly not Latin in origin. All right. This is probably going to be that court again. I will draw my card in response here. Hope to draw Force of Will. Negative. All right. So I don't like any of this. I'm going to use Teferi to Court of Grace. <laughs> My opponent says the staff is annoying as F. So is Narset. I think I resolve Wandering Emperor at sorcery speed. Minus make a samurai. Which puts a counter on the staff. And then I will bounce Court of Grace out of play yet again. This is a very strange game. Where both of us are, like, right on the cusp of being able to utterly destroy the other person. Like, my opponent is drawing so many cards. And, like, their monarch thingy is scary. I'm, I'm so good with these small creatures with the amount of removal that I have. 
So iron ice, excuse me. My opponent's counter spells are now on. They can now do brazen borrower nonsense as well. All right. I assume this is a prismatic ending on either the token or the staff. Yeah, okay, they're going for a prismatic ending. And it's gone. They get an extra card for being the monarch. Let's try to do things. Swords targeting Stoneforge Mystic. Swords. Swords? Swords? Swords targeting Snapcaster Mage. I think I want to kill Narset. Narset is dead. I think I want... I think I'm going to greed this and try to make another land drop. Let's ponder. Yes. Oh, wow. Force of Will is also very good, though. I'm going to take the land drop. I think just getting further ahead on board is very strong right now. Um, I want this to be a trap. Do some stuff. I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on this. I could have done that pre-combat, but I didn't really expect it to matter. I want to take the Monarch as, like, the next big thing. Fuck, I just got rid of the last one. Fuck. Swords to Plowshares is very good. So I lost a critical card. My opponent just going to slam court. I guess I can just Prismatic Ending away this Narset. All right, yeah, my, so my opponent slams the court. So, land drop. Prismatic Ending, target Narset. White, blue, green is three. Okay, that worked. <laughs> uh, plus on Samurai. Get in for four. I become the pretty, pretty princess. Go to second main phase. Play Teferi. Teferi minus. Bounce Court of Grace, keep that out of the way, at least for a little while, and I will get to draw my first card for being the Monarch. And my opponent can become the Monarch, but hopefully they can't become the Monarch while also doing other cool shit. This game is insane. What the fuck is this? Oh god. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I knew that was a possibility. I assume Wandering Emperor gets destroyed here. That'll still leave me as being the monarch. Hence my opponent's pause here. They have three very valid choices. Okay, yep, it is Wandering Emperor. Um, actually, do I want to block? Block, this takes one, then exile germ. Yeah, I probably do. Okay. All right, cool. I've got a Teferi in play. Ponder's fine. This is the recommended round. This is the first round where I felt like things have been just, like, super interesting. Alright. Always plus to fairy. Always start turn off with Brainstorm from there. Oh, wow. Those are cards. Go back some lands. Yeah. For one mana. Prismatic ending is that away. Make a samurai. Make a staff. Uh, I'm just going to draw a card now. Oh, uh, yeah, decent turn. Draw a card for being the Monarch. I've drawn through the crap that was on top of my library. That's fine. My opponent has to make their plans at sorcery speed. Mapcaster Mage has a lot of options. I imagine we're just swordsing my other token. That's also fine. Fucking Court is going to come back again. Yeah. I guess I do this. Just take out that body. Because every body is something that can pick up this. Is a problem. That's almost good. The fairy plus. Play land. Play this creature. I think I just plus this here. Pass the turn. My opponent, unfortunately, gets a critter that they can then equip with Cauldra. But I have two, like, super relevant Planeswalkers. Yep. 9-9, nine, nine, Flying, Haste, Jerk. Going at Wandering Emperor. And I can't do anything about that. That occurs. Uh, prismatic Ending. I bounce this creature. But my opponent is, like, currently the Monarch. So, like, there is 
real danger here. Um, okay. So, do this uncounterably. Bounce the court, I think. Just don't give my opponent extra bodies. Get a cat. Puts a counter on this. This is so much pressure. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to draw now. I think I need to draw now and just assume that I find something else cool to do. Hello! Have I made my land drop? Not made my land drop? Okay. Then I think I will tap this. Like so. Gain a life. Alright, I put this in. That escapes. I make a regular land drop, which isn't good enough. I needed another colored land to immediately cast an Uro. I'll grab... Undra. Play a staff. Make a bird. Put a counter on both of those. Guess draw. I guess I can wait. I find it likely that I will lose to timeout. Uh, <laughs> force of will. Fuck. Okay, I mean, at least that's an answer to it. So, life got a lot harder. We're not done. I have to answer that Blood Moon. I take nine as a result. Okay, my opponent doesn't want to attack. That's okay. Oh, wow. That's a good draw. That's a very good draw. White, blue, red. Three colors for Blood Moon. Okay, that happens. Next. Green, green, blue, blue. Plus five cards. Uro. I draw a card. I will not put a land onto the battlefield. That is a spell. Do this thing. Get triggers. Now I have two creatures that can attack in and let me become the monarch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I forgot about Brazen Borrower. Needed to attack with one more body. That's okay. It's a complicated game. That's okay. I get some mistake. But it's not that detrimental in the grand scheme of things. Right. One mana. Um, I tapped that wrong then. I am not leaving up blue as of right now. Uh, that's okay. I've still got tricks. Game's insane. Come on! That's rough. So let's draw a card. If it's force. Not force. Let's draw a card. See if it's force. It gives me another cat. Still not force. I get more counters. Um, but this slows me down a lot. Now what? <laughs> oh, right. That's a thing that's going to happen. <clears throat> this is just a uh, 13 in the air. Yeah, okay. No, that's fine. That's totally fine. Thanks for asking. All right, so I lose one of my critters. I used a decent number of prismatic endings and teferis. So, that's a thing. Alright, yep, th that's a mountain. Good news is, I can become the monarch. Bad news is, that. Let's go ahead and attack... Ah, uh, maybe I should have played this. I don't know, I really want to see what I draw. I don't think the cat is the difference between a win and a loss here. Alright. Put in extra land drop. Rana takes eight. I will become the monarch. I want to, like, ponder and look for a force of will, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, I like this. Very Jace. It's hard to get Jace into play. But now, I can go ahead and play this. I didn't get my maximum value out of it. So that's fine. I want this. I guess I do it on their turn. It lets them hard cast something like a force of will, but then they don't just equip the equipment to something else. All right, this is 11 life. It's a lot. All right, that's a force. I will respond by forcing back, pitching misstep. Oof. 
All right. Back clears. Um, they still have an Uro to deal with. Like, it's very much a thing. So they're going to shoot one of my critters. They need, like, a swords or something. Okay, they found one. So I need a removal spell for that angel token, or I am going to die. All right, and they've split up their stuff. Sure. I knew about that, Jace. Gotta look for something here. That doesn't do anything. We'll shuffle. That's a mountain. Think means I'm dead. Draw a card here. Play a mountain. I have no other valid plays. We'll pass the turn. I think I'm dead in the air. What a fucking game, folks. Turn 15. Yep. This is exactly 13 in the air. My opponent recognizes that. Yep. You got it. Uh, multiple main deck blood moons. Being the thing that was the deal breaker here. <sighs> Seeds of Innocence. Is that a reasonable thing to do in this matchup? No. Doesn't hit enchantments. Only artifacts. JK. I like Hull Breacher. Half considering I'm recall. I think I'm going to do it. I like Carpet of Flowers as insurance versus Blood Moon. Do not like Dress Down. I don't think Minor Misstep fights over the things that matter. This gets me Hull Breacher and a Carpet. I think Jace is bad versus my opponent's Narsets. I'm going to get a second Carpet and board down one Swords for a third. I, I think this game is a lot about mana. Yes. I will start on basics this game here. It's a little awkward, but I think it just kind of is what it is. Always yield to that. Make some blue. I'm going to go ahead and fetch a basic here. Just get this started early. Just take my redraw off of this. It's very good if I spike a land. If I don't, I don't care. Another Uro. And then next turn I can string together a whole bunch of cantrips. All that matters is I, like, string together cantrips before my opponent can drop a Narset or a Blood Moon. Awkward if my opponent plays Stoneforge here. Because, like, I usually can find an answer to a Stoneforge or a Calder or whatever, but not always. Uh, we kind of lucked out. Okay. Did not lose Carpet immediately. Confident enough that I'm going to want blue. I will just do this and ponder. Um, I don't mind the land drops here. Go ahead and put trop on top. No shuffle. I think I'll just ponder through that stuff then. I don't want this now. Okay, cool. Um, let's do this and then just pass with brainstorm available. Rather than ponder again. And an end of turn brainstorm gives me. Sure. That's a shuffle for that brainstorm. That gives my opponent red mana. Uh, anyway, I don't think I finished the thought. End of turn brainstorm gives me enough to attempt an Uro. Which is a thing I would like to do. Ooh, Teferi. Teferi's cool. I will probably. I want both those lands. But let's bury an Uro. Need a second one of those right now. Yes. Pick blue. Yeah. I'll just attempt a Teferi. Like if my opponent wants to blast this, they can blast this. Then I keep the Uro as a card that actually matters later. Oh yeah, those are threats. I'll put Wandering Emperor on the top here. No shuffle, call it a turn. I don't have real removal right now. Given that I think I'm the aggressor here, I think I'm going to just junk that. Right, I wasn't expecting Spell Pierce. Uh, that resolves. I think I let my opponent get a Cauldra. I'll probably just play Uro this turn, and then Wandering Emperor later. Make blue. Play Uro. Drop in a land, play a land, fetch. Got my basics already, so I'll trop. 
then I'll just convert Uro into a different card. Keeping the good one. Making another land drop. So I am very much down in terms of resources here. Ooh. But I'm way ahead in terms of mana, so like my cantrips will become incredibly strong. I'll take five here, but then I just exile this, which hopefully is good. A little when I play this is a little awkward. I think I'm gonna go for the upside and do it in combat. Oh, I I should have picked a different color here. It's okay. I had better lines. All right, Uro again. Draw a card. Uh, I have Spell Pierce to think about. I'm going to put that on the battlefield. So I will cast Wandering Emperor. Force of Negation. Sure. My opponent's ahead here. Their attacks aren't the best unless they have something that deals with Uro. Uh, they do. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's a lot of my stuff getting answered. Yikes. Oh, uh, and there's more. You have a, a Blood Moon as the cherry on top. Court of Grace would be worse. Okay, it, it, it is Blood Moon. So I don't get to do some of my cool cantrip shit. Uh, I'm going to pass the turn here, keeping that land for brainstorm purposes. We're, we're both Hellbent. I think that situation favors my opponent by quite a bit, but all it takes is one removal spell on my side of the battlefield for me to just kind of break this wide open. I played around Bell Pierce last turn, which means that I don't answer this cleanly. And that is what it is. I don't regret it. I do regret the color that I chose with Carpet of Flowers on my previous turn, though. All right, there's the Timeless Dragon. Uh, yes. Use white. I will brick the thing that is doing me most damage immediately. Cauldra can be moved around later a few land drops from now, which kind of makes me want to do it on the Timeless Dragon instead. I th think I'm hoping to have done other things that matter by the time that we reach that point. Sure, sure, sure. My opponent also has some stuff like Narset and Court in their deck. Uh, that hurts me. Oof. Anyway, stuff like Narset and Court in the deck that can just kind of spin the game on a dime. Got about three more turns in me. At 11. Alright, that's not bad. I'll hold that. I'll play it once they're in combat on Timeless Dragon. But if they equip Cauldra, I need to remove the thing that they equip Cauldra to. There's also a chance that this just eats Force of Will. Like, my opponent has something over there that they're not playing. Alright. Problem temporary answer temporarily answered, but... You know. Let's brainstorm. The Snapcaster Mage for Red Elemental Blast. I think effectively means that I'm dead. Like... Play one of these. Because this just gets equipped, and it's 5, 6, 7, 8 damage. Leaving me at 2. That needs to get equipped to Stoneforge, yeah. And then even if I answer Stoneforge, Snapcaster kills me the following turn. Whew. Yep. I think that's the end. Yep, that does not do it. I will concede. Uh, GG's hell of a match. Alright, my opponent has revealed a Yorian. I have a hand that can have three basic lands. So I'll keep that against what might be Death and Taxes. Um, if this is DNT, we're in for another slog of a round. Uh, not DNT. Probably Maverick. Looks like Maverick. Or at least something in that overall ballpark. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna towards the Dryad Arbor. And not let my opponent get ahead on mana. And then next turn I can fetch a basic Ponder. And... Try to find an answer to whatever they play this turn. Ooh, passing. That is interesting. That is also interesting. I think I wasteland my opponent. Like, this sets my opponent back two different land drops. 
It means that I don't have like minor misstep up this turn, but it feels fine and potentially leads to some very strong plays. Ooh, was not expecting blue. Sure. I can ponder and try to find an out to that, or I can just play my staff. Um, let's ponder and look for a removal spell for that. If I miss, it's not the end of the world. Burrow's not bad. But I don't think I'm ready to start trying to win the game yet. I think I want to just make some land drops for a little while, draw some cards, and answer my opponent's stuff, try to run them out of initial resources. Uh-oh. I'm going to die to that. Deck's not great at answering Planeswalkers. And I don't have the initial removal spell here. I don't have a creature to pressure that. I'm fucking dead. I am just dead to that Minskin Boo. So my opponent's got blue, green, white, red. Help me brainstorm. You are my only hope. Negative? I'm dead to this Minskin Boo. I can't prismatic ending it. I can't pressure it effectively. I don't have instant speed removal for the hamster, and sorcery speed removal for it is not good. Misstep goes back, and I'm about to get wastelanded. Uh, cast ponder, any order, shuffle, mist swords to plowshares. I think I'm comfortable conceding here, given how long my other rounds have gone. Uh, that card's a problem. And I don't get better at answering it in post-sideboard games. Like, I get one Force of Negation. Probably going to play Endurances, too. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of Minor Misstep. My opponent's going to have some big stuff, like some big Green Sun stuff. That's a problem. Rest Down's probably not necessary, but might do some cool things. And I don't know, maybe I cut one of these. Ah, uh, keep? This leverages the fact that I'm on the play pretty well and hopefully removes a turn one mana dork with prismatic ending. It won't remove Dryad Arbor, which is really awkward, so I hope my opponent leads on, like, Birds of Paradise. B. Forest. Carpet. That's fine. I get to answer that mana dork with prismatic ending. I will just answer that immediately. I don't want to give my opponent mana. Well, it could be cheeky. I could fetch... Plains, Forest, play Joel Rail, last turn, and then do a, like a Teferi bounce line. All right. Double fetch. Grab Forest with the second. Play my creature and pass. Just fully play around carpet for a little while. Yield to that. I hate how bad I am at fighting Minsk and Boo. Okay. My opponent is doing cool shit as well. I only get one spell this turn. One of these do I care about? I think I care about making more land drops, actually. If I draw exactly a white... Or no, this is my turn three. Let's just bounce this out of play. Try to remain something that resembles the beatdown. Give them a carpet mana. And then try to use my four removal spells in hand to deal with the things that they play off of carpet. If I can answer Carpet next turn. I don't know. If they have Land Drop and play Minsk and Boo, it's so bad. I don't know. I'll have three power in play this time, though. That's a big difference. Black. We are straight up five color Yorian nonsense. Hey. Oh. Sure. So then that sacrifices Dryad Arbor to kill this. I guess in theory they could plus... Wrist plus. Okay, my opponent's doing cooler shit than I am. For sure. Alright. Plus this. Can't kill Grist in combat. Yet, I guess. I think I'd die if I brainstorm lock myself. So I'm gonna cast Ponder. That's technically a land drop. I don't think I'm interested in this stuff, though. I would like a better land drop. Alright, Greed Rewarded. All right, Prismatic Ending can go after Carpet or Grist. Wish I had second white. This is also kind of a problem. I think what I'm going to do here is send 
creatures at Grist in an attempt to make my opponent chump block. All oh, right, this has one power. I pivot and swords. I maybe pivot and swords now. All right. Swords Dryad Arbor. Grist takes two. I keep my creature. I've already made a land drop. I'll just go ahead and pass. Now I just try to finish off Grist and hope my opponent doesn't have an absolute banger of a play. All right. Yep, yep, yep. There's problems over there. I, I see. Um, that occurs. I think I'm comfortable. No, I get a cat if I wait. All right. Oh, they didn't nuke my graveyard. <laughs> okay. Noted. Uh, good. Plus this. I think I brainstorm now. Uh, swords is great. Put back like Uro Uro. Get a cat. Swords endurance. I can now kill Grist in combat. There we go. Yeah, you can draw your card. That's fine. All right, Grist is dead. I will now discard Boseju. Blow up this staff. I always forget this is legendary. And we'll call that a turn. Next turn, I can ending to deal with carpet. If I don't have to use ending on something else. And go from there. And once I get a few lands deeper, I can start thinking about these Wandering Emperors, which are currently stuck in my hand. Sure. Ooh, yeah. I have exactly one Wasteland in my deck to deal with Field of the Dead. I guess I have Oseju. Alright, Yorian is in hand. Okay, cool. So let's Uro. Get a card deeper. We'll draw a card and make me a cat. Don't have a land. Plus Teferi. I will Prismatic Ending that Carpet of Flowers and just end this nonsense. Seven incoming damage. Opponent's at 13. I need a white mana for Wandering Emperor or alternatively a green or blue mana for Uro. So basically I need a mana. Okay, cool. God, my opponent has so much value in their deck and it is horrifying. Now that I've seen Staff, I probably play Holbreacher. In theory, I really like Wandering Emperor, but I wasn't able to cast it that game. How's Jace? Jace is really bad as compared to like Minskin Boo. It's not the best versus just like a bunch of random tokens. I think I'm gonna cut Jace. I think I want the fourth one of these back after seeing how strong it was that game. What am I not playing? I'm playing both of those. One swords? Maybe one swords. Unfortunately, this has no land. It has a land. I'm going to keep this and pitch a force of will here. I think after my mulligan, I just can't afford to go down a card. I'm going to be bad versus a wasteland. But this almost certainly has to get a tropical island to start things off. Sure. But I just need to be able to ponder, find a land, cast turn two life from a loam, and stabilize my mana. All right, Force of Will came back. Let's go and find a trop. Cast ponder. This is acceptable. Which one do I want to draw? Brainstorm. Staff goes on bottom. I draw Brainstorm now. In case I have to force of will, then I don't have to pitch to fairy. What you got? How bad is it? Forest. It's a carpet. Um, I don't know that I can force this and have enough mana to fight over my opponent's other resources. This is such a huge tempo play. That'll be plus two mana next turn. Maybe I just have to. Mana is king. And I want to have time to just kind of like derp around and do Life from the Loam based nonsense. Well, Tundra, Life from the Loam, target this. I am very happy that I did not eat a Force of Negation there. Oh, okay. We both have Life from the Loams going, and I don't have a green card for Endurance as of right now. 
it's also like kind of too late once I do get to my turn. Like I can endurance the life from alone away now, but my opponent already just got huge value out of it. Sure. I don't mind filling my graveyard and trying to hit Uro. I don't really want the staff. Let's do this. I think I'm just going to pass the turn and cast an Endurance later. Not super worried about it right now. Yeah. I just want to be able to put in a creature that can help tangle with a Minskin Boo if my opponent has one. And, like, I know I'm playing around Minskin Boo, which is probably, like, a two-ish of in a large deck, but... It is one of the easiest ways for this game to just quickly slip away. Uh, Green Sun's fine. That's just mana. Yep. End of turn, I'll be going for another Trop. And I will go ahead and Wasteline the Life from the Loam out of the graveyard. That way we don't run into uh, Field of the Dead nonsense later. And start pressuring my opponent's life total. I would like to resolve to Fairy this turn. The Fairy... Backed up by Swords to Plowshares is pretty respectable. Drops my opponent to 14. Let's see if this resolves. I'm just plussing if it does. Ooh. Red Elemental Blasts? Yeah, hard hardcore, just straight up five color control. Uh, okay, I mean, their life from the loam is gone. That's a boon. Oh, my opponent's doing this stuff too. I think it's much better as a one of in a green sun deck than anything else okay i'm probably more scared of this these two are rough in conjunction i don't know i can i actually think i'm gonna take this out this gives my opponent less life cats aren't an immediate problem but them going wide of say some planeswalkers would be all right so let's fetch grab a savannah Cast a life from the loam. Call it a turn. I'm kind of at the mercy of my opponent's remaining three cards plus draw step here. And they've got some selection to make it worse for me. So there's a trigger. Uh, that's a problem. I imagine that kills me in about two turns. Like my opponent has eight power worth of attackers, and not to mention that like they can just fully ignore me attacking Minskin Boo because I can't even kill it with an Endurance hit. I am very much missing out on red mana here. Uh, I cannot Life from the Loam. I do not think that this is going to lead me anywhere that's good enough. I would be happy to be proven wrong, though. Let's ash in the draw. No dredge. Another staff. Yeah, like, I can make chump blockers, but I can't actually meaningfully beat this hamster from here. Yeah, like, I attack, my opponent chumps. I can chump block this, take seven, go to one, be dead if I fetch. Yeah, I, I think at this point, with this much stuff on board, I am comfortable conceding. Whew, that was a slog of a league, and we ended up 1-4. Uh, overall thoughts on the deck list. Uh, not in any capacity playable, but there's really cool ideas here that I think can be ported into a real deck list. Um, essentially, I think there's just too many copies of things without enough synergy leaning into them. Like, this card's cool and all, but like once you start playing against a deck that can remove it, or once you start playing against a Caracas deck, it feels really bad. I like this sort of thing much more as like maybe a one of Zenith target in a deck like what my opponent was just playing. And I guess my issue with Staff of the Storyteller is like it's basically good in conjunction with these. And if you're in a situation where you want to cut these, then the staff is not particularly strong. I'm pretty good versus creature based elements, but I'm much softer against something like a planeswalker. I can't actually pressure like a planeswalker very well in most cases because like i'm dealing with one twos and maybe two twos that i make or one ones unless i have something like kuro in play and i just feel very soft to planeswalkers i don't have like blasts for example that i can use to just like oh i cleanly answered your planeswalker 
Um, so maybe this deck needs some Hydro Blasts because it's so bad versus Minsk and Boo, for example. Um, we did some serious grinding, which makes me think that, like, the Staff is probably a real card. Like, most of the times that I've played this card on this channel, I haven't been super happy with it. And most of the times that I've seen this in play, it's been pretty annoying. Like, it coincidentally dodged Narset in one of the rounds, for example, just kind of letting me draw cards in a situation where I otherwise wouldn't have been able to. So I think I'm more willing to explore the staff in shells with things that are, like, less restrictive than this. Like, maybe in a shell with, um, say, Young Pyromancer and or Third Path Iconoclast, maybe? Like, I, I like what is conceptually going on here, but I kind of felt like I was having mana problems for a lot of the league, because if I start out the game on these three lands, then I'm a land further away from Uro Escape, or I'm not able to double spell super easily, or I'm not able to hit, like, White White for Wandering Emperor, like, maybe the deck can't really afford the Wasteland and or the Boseju that are in here. I'm not 100% sure. I'd want to mess around with the mana. Like, when I just had mana because Carpet of Flowers was in play and I can do the cool shit that my deck was capable of doing, it was cool. But, like, I feel like this deck was getting online, like, turn 6 or 7, which is not super acceptable in terms of raw speed for Legacy. Um, so this gets a thumbs down from me in terms of an exact deck, but I like conceptually the area that this is exploring. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya!